Many will try to enter, but few will succeed at passing through the narrow door of beating the market. To be clear, beating the market is earning an investment return that exceeds the S&P 500 index. This is the 500 largest companies listed on exchanges in the United States, and only a very small percentage of investors have actually accomplished this deed. But what makes this task so hard? And what are some ways that you might be able to get an edge? The first obstacle standing in the way is, well, being a human. We're all humans, except Mark Zuckerberg, he's definitely a robot. And as humans, we are equipped with irrational psychology. This means most people are controlled by their emotions and recent news and headlines in the short term can somehow impact their long-term investing horizons. They tend to buy high and sell low, which is a recipe for mediocre returns. Let's take a look at the big, big energy people had buying crypto at ridiculous prices earlier this year. Investors would tout Dogecoin and Bitcoin to the moon, buying at all-time highs, then selling when the craze came falling down at them earlier this year. If they truly believed in the fundamentals of their investments, their mouth would have been savoring when they got the chance to buy more of the same asset for a lower price. Because after all, Bitcoin still does exactly what it was meant to do 10 years ago, even today. The only thing that's changed is people's perceived value of it. Where did that big, big energy go? So now we know the human brain contributes to not beating the market. But it's far from the only thing. Taxes are another big blow. Depending on how much money you make and where you live, you could be giving away as much as 40% of your returns to Uncle Sam. Even dividends, which are one of the most tax efficient investments out there, they can see an investor lose 15-20% to of their returns right off the top. But okay, what about those passive investments? What about those ETFs that just track the market and aren't actively managed? Surely owning an ETF like VU or SPY that just track the S&P 500 means we can get returns equal to the S&P 500, right? Well, not exactly. You see, these funds make money by charging you money for doing the work of pooling other people's money together to buy stocks. This is called the expense ratio. And they can be very, very cheap, like VU's is only three basis points to well over 1% for other funds. An expense ratio of 1% would mean you're getting charged $100 in fees for every $10,000 invested every year. By the way, that expense ratio, it kicks in even in years where the fund loses money. So even if you just bought a passive S&P 500 index fund, you certainly wouldn't beat the market, but you would come fairly close to mimicking it, performing just slightly worse. I do want to emphasize that history has shown us that most investors will become everyday millionaires if they just consistently invest in low-cost S&P 500 index funds over time, and they just hold and don't panic sell when there is short-term fear like there is today. There is absolutely nothing wrong with growing rich through index funds. A study done by Spiva found that over a three-year period, just 20% of funds beat the market. And over a 20-year period, that drops to just under 5%. That means investors are actually paying people money for their funds to actually do worse than the overall market. That rare 5% that can beat the market, what are their secrets? What are they hiding? Well, one thing they may be hiding is insider trading. Insider trading is when someone has material information regarding a company that has yet to be made public. It is actually illegal to be trading based on this knowledge. But that doesn't mean it doesn't happen, and it's a way a fund could possibly beat the market if they knew a company was going to offer a new product or service before the general public, and they buy more shares ahead of their earnings. Or on the other side of the coin, they might sell their shares if they knew that bad news was going to be announced. Now an actual legal way you can get an edge on the market is to just invest in what you already know. For example, I'm an accountant, so I might be able to understand the company Oracle 
a lot more than the typical person because I actually use their services on an everyday basis. Just like if you work in the medical field, you might be able to understand big pharma companies much better than the typical investors and potentially find an edge there. Investors like Peter Lynch, who between 1977 and 1990, had a mind-boggling 29% annual return with his Magellan Mutual Fund, credits his success to three main basic investing principles. The first one is to only buy what you understand. How many people put their life savings in speculative cryptocurrencies without having a clue on what they were actually buying. How many people have been buying Palantir, one of the most confusing companies to understand, and how many of those people can actually explain what this company does? When you know the ins and outs of your companies, you are less likely to sell them when the hard times inevitably come. The second is that they always do their homework. Research the company, know the fundamentals, Go through the financials, know the company margins, the cash flows, potential for growth. All of these are important factors to consider before investing. Don't just blindly follow some fool on YouTube on how great of a company Tattooed Chef is. Third, and I think this is the most important in my eyes, and that is to invest in the long run. Everyone I talk to, they always are obsessed with making money quick. When you invest in the short term, you unfortunately have everyday news impacting your financial decisions. No matter how much of an expert you are in steps one and two, the short term news will kill your returns. Examples of short term news that we have today is 10% inflation, ridiculous gas prices, labor shortage, midterm elections, global conflicts, and so many more. Lynch concluded it's not worth the effort to worry about the short-term fluctuations. In the long run, the impact of this news starts to fizzle if you just buy great companies. And that's the true secret here, guys. Just buy and stash great companies across the board, be diversified, and hold them for the long term. I can't guarantee that will help you beat the market, but it should help an investor grow rich over the long run. Now the reason why I made this video is that I see so many financial YouTubers trying to sell expensive courses with the guise of if you pay me $10,000 for this course, you will somehow learn to beat the market. I'm just telling you, if I knew the secret to beating the market year in and year out, I sure as hell am not sharing that secret with all of you. And I certainly would not just be selling it for $10,000 when I can make unlimited gains. I gave you free information in 10 minutes that is probably more useful than paying $10,000 for all those courses. Is beating the market hard? Yeah, only 5% of investors will beat it over a 20 year period. And I doubt all these gurus on YouTube are doing it. Is becoming rich hard? Yes, it is, but it certainly is attainable for everyone. You just have to be disciplined and work hard. If you like this content, be sure to hit that like button for the algorithm and are subscribed for more videos like this. Remember, my videos are always found in podcast form under the Collect Cash podcast name. Nothing I said today should count as financial advice. Always work with a licensed financial advisor when making investment decisions. And I will buy stash and collect cash you later